is she? I can't say. Come on. I promised her. I couldn't stick to that. Um, so did she go in the same car? A cab. And she put her hand on the seat next to me. And then she moved closer so that her right thigh was touching my left. And I was shaking. I was so fucking excited to be near her. Mm. Very lightly. And just my bottom lip. Just the bottom. She was an incredible kisser, do you know what I mean? Just don't tell Wendy Jo we've been talking about her. So, uh oh, I, oh, she's here. <laughs> she's here. <laughs> Hi, Wendy Jo, Jeff in Vegas. Oh, got to turn your audio on. Bottom left. Yeah, yeah, turn your audio on. We can't. Hear there you go. There you go. Well, hello. Greetings to both of you. Thank you for Hi. talking to me today. Thank you. Hey. Now, considering your subject matter of your movie, uh, I might get a little personal. My own experiences. <laughs> so just to relate. So just a little disclaimer right there. So please do. Okay. I'm uh, down. I'm down. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm I'm an old raver. You know. So. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> like same. You know. Yes. You have no idea what Molly does to a person. Um, I but, do. No. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good. Oh, We're gonna be, it's gonna be an honest conversation. <laughs> you know. Uh, it's so funny because, you know, your movie's about a weekend fling, about a couple and another woman. And uh, as a man of the world, uh, you know, when these things happen right, it's like a dear diary moment. But when they go wrong, you always regret it. And being from a film school, going to film school, screenwriting class says, always write what you know about. So Wendy, Joe, do you have any kind of confessions here? <laughs> I think the movie is a confession, right? <laughs> uh, probably I, I've experienced a little bit of each of the characters uh, for myself. Um, and I think I was motivated to, to write both something that's very sex positive and is uh, and very queer, but is mature women, uh, queer women, lesbian women, um, living their life and having this particular experience uh, together without making it, uh, you know, politicized or over dramatic is just kind of taken as at face value and at kiss value between them. And, you know, I feel that sex begins with kissing, you know? And when you have a good kisser, it's incredible. It really is. I would agree. Agree? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the worst. If you have like a, ooh, like who wants like a bad, I don't think that if you have a bad kiss, you're gonna lead to sex, right? I mean, like that's probably not gonna happen. <laughs> and there's so many moments of jealousy between Kate and Jenna, and you know, you can't overthink those situations uh, or that will happen, you know what I mean? So the movie just, if you don't get to it, if you don't plan on it, you know, all of a sudden all these feelings come, come, you know, of doubt and, and changing your mind. That's right. And so, yeah, there, as we watch Jenna, she's, she's kind of the hinge, right? She's the, the, the most uh, not sure uh, about the dynamic or having a, having a threesome. Um, and she's not had one ever before. Also, you know, it's revealed as the movie goes on that there's, uh, other reasons for Jenna to be feeling uncomfortable and it doesn't have to do with oh do I want to get naked with two other women at the same time and what's what's this going to be uh, physically and emotionally but you know there's other stuff going on with her relationship with Kate. Right and it takes a certain personality to do something like this I mean and, and obviously she didn't have it you know or she, she and I've been in that situation where just like you know hey you know it's like you don't you don't want to force anyone to do anything because then it right. ruins it but uh, but also, what did Jenna take? Was that a Xanax or Molly or what was that? I couldn't tell exactly oh, no, what that was. No, it's totally anti-anxiety. Yeah. That's Xanax. the worst for something like that. You don't want someone passing out with Xanax. No, that's why. <laughs> and she's then she's drinking. drinking you know? Yes, she's, that makes it worse. She's only took a quarter of it and it's prescribed as prescribed. Okay. I, I, for me, Jenna, when I wrote the character, she has anxiety, social anxiety issues. So it's already a kind of a struggle for her. Um, to be in this particular dynamic with her girlfriend. I found it really humorous that, you know, at the very beginning when things are starting to get going, the dead mother's conversation, talk about a vibe killer. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God. She just kept going on and on. I'm like, I'm like, really? I would have just like, stop talking about that. You know, that doesn't get anybody in the mood talking about your dead mothers. <laughs> like literally, it's like, that's why it's know. funny. That's why it's <laughs> funny. That's true. You know, that's why it's kind of like, all right, well. Uh, you know, and it's so funny from experience, the sex never bothered, bothered me in those kind of situations. It was the intimacy afterward. And I have, you know, just like in your movie, Wendy Joe, I discovered my partner cuddling, you know, and that just destroyed me. And it wasn't just them sleeping oh. together. It was like they were embraced. And I walked in after I passed out somewhere and that just destroyed me. It really did. Yeah. 
yeah isn't it isn't that interesting like the that line that 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 uh blurry line of um what what does that mean you know i'm not jealous in this situation if it just seems more sex act based and we're de definitely it's you're still vulnerable in that but it's like uh now it's about feelings and now it's about affection and the showing of that affection. So I, I yeah, think I mean, I, I totally agree. I think, you know, for me, it's kind of the same, like I can separate the sex part of it, but once, you know, the feelings come into it and once like you're doing things with that person that we should be doing, you know, I think then it becomes something that is like hurtful and that would make, you know, me jealous in real life. And I think that that made Kate jealous in the film as well. Yeah, because, you know, you get really confused after a great night of sex and thinking you mix your feelings that up with uh, intimacy and like, oh, you, you know, you cross that line and that happened to your character, Rachel, is that she was at the end, she was just, it's like, no, it was just, it is what it is. And it's, that's the risk you take when you do something like that. Yeah, I mean, I think she, she, I truly think that she thought, I mean, obviously I made choices about Kate's character as I was, you know, researching her and, and getting into her and things like that. And the choice that I had made is that I think she really thought like going into this, that it was gonna turn out better for everyone. And, you know, in the, in the end it didn't turn out good. For, I mean, it turned out better for everyone except for her really because I think Jenna discovered that her girlfriend had been, you know, not telling her the truth. And I think Mia doesn't really care either way. You know what I mean? So I think really it kind of backfired in her face a little bit, which is really, it's nice to watch, I think, on screen. So, yeah. And you could really feel the sexual tension, but it's so not from the male perspective, Wendy Jo, obviously. And there was such a grace and sensuality to it. Thank you. What? I just, I just, I was thinking, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Is, I agree. It was a different perspective. <laughs> different perspective. And Wendy Jo, did you approach this setting like a play? Because it was so convenient for the actors and I'm, I'm sure from a coverage standpoint too. Um, you, as, as a play, did you I say? I mean, the way you wrote the screenplay and it's all yeah. in one place. It just, it seems it was convenient to tell this story without, yeah. you didn't have to go in a million places. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I, I did write it that way to be efficient and to have it be affordable to make. But I also like, I like to challenge myself to, you know, limitations can really help me, help most people, uh, my uh, experience as a writer. So it's like, um, it's like writing a haiku. You have five, seven, five, five syllables, seven syllables. So that's a container, right? So if I contain Good Kisser to one house for the most part, then the challenge is how many rooms can we use in the house and the yard? Um, how do we have Clark, the neighbor, how does he come into play? Um, originally when I wrote that, for example, it was a, in my mind, he was next door neighbor, like over a fence in a way that you typically think. And then when we found this location, it was like, oh my, how awesome. There's a mother-in-law house in the back. That's where Clark lives. That's even better. He's, he actually is friends with her. So I, I was revising the script as soon as we found that location because it gave, opened up uh, a lot of other possibilities. And uh, I love the neighbor. Oh, are we frozen? Like, uh oh, do we freeze? I think he might be frozen. He and you and I. Well, there you are. Yeah, you're there back. We're fine. Oh, hi. <laughs> I was like, I think you might be frozen, but we're good. <laughs> um, uh, briefly, I love the neighbor. He looks like he's right out of a Star Trek episode, You're like the leader of another world. I mean, he looked great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Carter Rodriguez. He's a Seattle-based actor and a musician. He's fabulous. And, and finally today, uh, I have to tell you, Winnie Joe, your website for Good Kisser is just spectacular. I've seen a lot of independent films and their websites, but yours was just so user-friendly. It was, it was one of the best websites I've ever seen for a film. Thank you. And, and with, again, uh, a lot of that uh, goes to uh, Jana Rodriguez, uh, who volunteered most of her time so, uh, to make that happen. And she, she works, uh, she moved to LA. I think she works at Netflix now. But that has nothing to do with our film getting on there. Um, <laughs> Which congratulations, uh, but, by the way, that's awesome being on there. Yes, your yes, right? We're, we're very, very excited. Um, and uh, the Netflix release just happened last week on August 20th. And we were on Apple TV and Amazon and Google Play before that. Um, and we knew we had to have this window. Couldn't really um, push it too much until it was already on Netflix. And so now we're just doing these fun, beautiful things with people like you. 
Well, thank you very much. Well, I enjoyed the film immensely. It was a great surprise. I think it's going to incite a lot of experimentation. So thank you for that. And uh, <laughs> wait a minute now. You don't think it's going to incite a lot of experimentation. Rachel, what do you think about that? I mean, don't you want that to be the case? I mean, yeah. I'm like into that. You know what I mean? Like if somebody wants it. That's not the theme like, of the movie. I don't know what it is. It's like, come on, take a chance. We're in quarantine now too. So, you know, it's I go like, talk to my roommate in there, you know? <laughs> Yeah, just get tested and like do it, you know, it's <laughs> absolutely very sensual film. Very. I loved it. And uh, thank you both for talking to me today. And when things get better, come visit us in Las Vegas and I'll come to New York. Winnie Joe, where are you? I'm in Seattle, but we would love to visit you in person in Las Vegas when it's safe. I want to come I visit the Space Needle. I want to come to Seattle again, too. I love the monorail. It's short, oh, yeah. but I love that thing. <laughs> But first time on that thing, I got on it and I got in the front seat and I thought we're going to have this great ride. It was over in 30 seconds, you know? I know. It's like a movie prop. It, it is. Well, thank you both and congratulations on the film and we'll talk again soon. Thank, thank you so you much. Thank you so much. Bye.